Hello guys and welcome to episode 36 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign playing as Isabella von Karstein leading the Vampire Counts to world domination. Today we are hopefully going to be trying to chase down the Moon Howlers. I could also tell Warborg to try and start dealing with Skaven but Skaven are generally in this direction anyway so I think we'll have her kind of semi-chase Gorkil one finger. He is going to retreat, we're not going to be able to chase. But that actually does put him into attrition, so that's not so bad. We also have Volk up here. He's ready to take a Howling Rock, so let's just quickly do that. Take that off the Moon Howlers. And then we'll be carrying on towards the desolation of Draken Moor. Alright, let's head over to Lenart and carry on with our turn. So Lenart, he's going to basically just run around and recolonize a lot of the stuff. So let's head up to yes. Mordheim with him. That will be the next settlement that he takes. We have Oleg Balakmir who is going to be heading over towards Festus. Actually no, we were going to have Ulrich go and take Middenstag and Middenheim, weren't we? Yeah. And then we're going to have Morath Morfin deal with Festus. That is the plan. How far can I go? Let's just bring him out of here. Raid doesn't allow him to go that far. If I go channeling, we don't get replenishment. How much do I need to adopt raiding? There's 25%. So if I go to 25%, can we now go into raiding? No. Oh no, we need 50%. Okay. So it's minus 25% movement range after you're already in the stance, but it requires 50% to enter the stance. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, what we'll do is just go into channeling because I think that will reduce it a little bit and we also get the extra magic, so... Can't complain. Let's head over to Lizel von Diesel, who will finally take Massive Orcal. We're good. Rom is in here. And we'll just take that. Does he get Grom's trait? He does. Extra diplomatic relations with High Elves. Interesting. We probably have that on a couple lords. When we see the High Elves they're actually going to probably like us which is going to be weird. Uh, the Galleys is already upgraded. That's nice. Really nice actually. So let's go ahead and put the walls in here then. Otherwise not really much else that I want to put in here. Maybe just the growth building. Yeah we'll pop that in there for now. Right, and Liesl von Diesel. Do I finally upgrade himself? The other thing is of, of uh, working on his magic because we don't have a vampire. I think we just make him better in combat. Let's do that. And we'll head over to Roderick. Uh, so Roderick's working his way through the north. Let's start heading round to Krakatrak. We have Milland. Who can take Flinsberg. Actually I might go for Kemperbad first. Because that's where the army is. And we'll play this out. So we'll take out the army, then we'll come back and get Flinsberg afterwards. And then what we can do is go for Durthu. Because Durthu's army is hanging about as well. This is an interesting map. They do have a defensive position here. But these sort of hills are never actually as good as they seem. And they're good maybe in this situation with the archers shooting down into the engagement. Uh, but for these cannons, like they're not going to be very good. Battle 
I mean, again, if maybe there was units down here, it might work. But yeah, these cliffs often obscure the edge. But what we're going to do, we'll probably split up into two. The living will join us. I'm going to send one unit around the right hand side. Actually, I'm, never mind. I'm going to just come in from this side altogether. Keep all the more Sengens on top of each other. That way they do lots of damage. We can have the bats go deal with any ranged units on the high ground. So that should be fine. Okay. Shift that forwards. Can I go around the back of this? No. I'm just going to keep my dogs in cover for now. And we'll be ready to engage over here. What I may do is get my bats to go and engage the cannon as well. And just splitting those up a little bit. Let's have the doggos go for the huntsman. And then we're gonna go kill the archers here. I don't really want to go straight into the crossbows. I do kind of want to go around. And I'm hoping that we can kind of get through the gap here. Get on top of those huntsmen. Seems to be working. Alright, let's pull off the dogs. Kind of cornering them potentially. We'll go into the bags guard, let's do that. And I'm gonna put invocations on these. All before us will perish. Mortis engine. <laughs> We're really not doing as much damage as I hope to those rogues guard. They do have a lot of armor, so kind of makes sense. Try and get my dogs out of there if I can. I want to keep them mobile. Get my bats out of it if I can as well. is they keep trying to like re-engage because there's a couple of them stuck on the ground ideally I want to be having these near my more engines because they would benefit Quite a lot, but maybe we can get rid of the Rags Guard finally. We have them kind of surrounded. But maybe there'll be enough chip damage to get the job done. Mm, doesn't look like it. Looks like that dog unit died. I'm trying to pull it out there.
Swordsmen are disintegrated at least. They can get out of here. Rip their souls out. I'm gonna try and bring these around. Maybe I can just have the bats go for the great cannons. The Ark Lector there. Holding up a lot of my troops. Well, we disintegrated the cannon crew. And they didn't really get many shots off, so that was good. Mortis the Mortis engine should actually do really well against the Rakes Guard because they don't care about the armor. some healing on those bats. have my lord maybe come back although he's currently grounded or at least he was he was actually just <laughs> annihilating an entire unit on his own I approve now, this is technically a settlement battle so we don't have to play it out any longer just get back to the campaign map Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get Dead Rise again on the Die Wolves. Must be the first time in a while that we lost the unit on its own like that. We will just occupy this. Thank you very much. And we'll demolish the barrow that is there. Yeah, next time round, we'll take Flinsburg. Although, it may just be out of range. He doesn't have Undying Horde Max style, that's why we didn't. Get that extra 15% dead rise again. This better be important. If I step out of the settlement, I think I'd take attrition. Which wouldn't really matter if we're taking Plinsburg, but... If it doesn't put us in range, it's kind of pointless to do anyway. Alright, Felix gains. Uh, I wanted to take... Castle Baston, but it looks like Carcassonne beat us to it, so we shall head over to Gizero. Well. And we'll stay in enemy territory. Uh, well, in this territory, because it has higher vampiric corruption, and therefore I think we avoid attrition. But next turn, we can hit Gizero, so we'll do that. Alright, over to Gark. He just needs to head over to Kalak Asgaraz. That is our hired army. Very cool. Goss can head down. We've got Walmond over here. Try and wound them. Can I scout in the same turn? No. I was going to say that would have been odd. Okay, so this is owned by Hagrief. I'm going to guess that's where it stops. It's not too bad. Although as soon as we get close to Hagrief, I would expect them to declare war on us. Another wound failure there. And Francisca. Hmm. You're coming over here to Milland, aren't you? 
Do I have another one that I could get? Uh, heroes. So we're 10 out of 10 on vampires. I would like to get more vampires. That doesn't increase the hero capacity, does it? Hmm. All right, well, damage buildings, we can fix them up in Grinberg. Should be okay. We will definitely upgrade the walls in Altdorf. I do not want to lose that. I'm also going to put Awakened Battlefield in here for the extra garrison. Uh, Myrmidons. We could go for the Undead Colony now. Eh, actually, no, I'm not going to bother. It's like quite, quite a lot. Quite a lot of money. We'll just do harvest corpses. I probably will do foster terror here because we're going to build a couple buildings in here. And now we have outposts available for Musalon. Now we could get some of our own units through Allegiance. But yeah, I'm not going to bother, I don't think. Cool. Like, how are our relationships with the High Elves? So we get Ruler's Tolerance 20. I think that's the two traits that we got from Grom. But overall, they don't like us very much. So that's, that's fine. I mean, I didn't really expect them to. Let's just double check our diplomacy, though. What do you see? We're pretty close to deals with the caravan. Let's go ahead and get this. Perfect. Let's do that. Get our non-aggression pact going. Get our trade agreement going. And that makes it much closer to us becoming friendly with them. Okay. Let's end the turn. Uh, I need to kind of keep an eye on the green skins, I think. It's probably the main thing. Obviously, Skaven's going to be annoying. Yep, goodbye, Frank Hills. Uh, I thought that was going through the green skins then. <laughs> really, Archeon? They try and go around me. I do not badly words with the weak. And now Aguilon would like a peace treaty. Interesting. Wintertooth coming at us. In the shank. Oh, perfect. Here we go. That is what we like to see. Oh, and Garethor attacking us as well. Right, okay. Well, that makes more sense. Like, Archeon standing nearby, and then, like, the reinforcements from the nearby settlement coming to attack us. But we, we all know how this ends. Okay, so the reinforcements are coming in from the left side. It is tempting to stand over there. Or what I could do is just... I'll just keep my army down here. I'll go and engage them over here. And then the reinforcements can just come join. Oh, 
What I find funny about it so far is I haven't used any abilities and they're still running away. Like, look at it. Hello? <laughs> I think it's maybe the terror that's doing that. Oh, they're going for my army over here. That's annoying. Well, it's, it's okay. Like, we can actually engage a lot of the stuff. They're going to wish they didn't. For sure. Yep, and that is why. Let's just get over here and engage all of these. Archeon. Is he going to come over here as well? Actually really weird behavior. Normally they can't wait to bundle in. I don't often care about my Vargolf like this. Very, very weird. I'm gonna have Isabella and friends engage Archeon. Vlad will be fine. Like, Vlad can just do Vlad things. I'm just gonna pull around. There we go. So that Isabella can catch them. My black coach can get out of here. Ooh, she's taking a lot of damage. Blood magic. I should be able to do Darkness. this, this, and this. And we want a Spirit Leech Archeon if he's doing Blood that much damage to her. Yes. We can also use that on her. What is that ability? I've never ever heard that before. To my uh, my grave guard. I mean, honestly, it, it again. I've mentioned this before. It actually doesn't matter so much if my extra units die here. Lord of the dead. I would have a like Vlad to come over and have a go at Archeon. We might just pop a pair of shades anyway. Wait, how is she idle? I mean, that's impressive. I might actually have to heal her. We will do that. We want to keep attacking Archeon whenever we can.
is Swords of Chaos. Surely slowly getting chipped. I'll put Master of Bagarment on the Chaos Spawn. So they don't do damage. Ooh, that is not good. I might have to get her out of here. She is taking way too much damage. I don't know if she's going to be able to. I think, um, yeah, it's the, the giant's hitting her. That's why. If we lose the shadow magic in this army, that's really bad. Uh, let's do Master of Begarment on the Giant. Let's see if I can get her out of there. I need someone else to be smacked about. We can definitely drop our own spirit leeches. I don't know if she's going to get the fireball off, but let's just bring these over here because I feel like we're on a bit of a timer. She could very easily go down any second. Let's just get one more pit of shades in here before we commit. Not one of my vampires got killed. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> right, she'll be fine because she can heal forever. And unfortunately... Our vampires do not benefit from the same thing. Oh, he's going after my Vargolf. Tell you what, Archeon has misbehaved this game. Very much misbehaved. I think she's a goner. Unless we cause enough army losses. She's gone. I think I jinxed it going in. That's what happened. <laughs> I was like, huh, oh, what's the worst that could happen? Like, we will definitely beat them. <laughs> and Archeon would be like... So silly. Vlad, Vlad actually Vlad. reached his healing cap. Okay. That's how it's gonna be, huh? Get rid of the giant. And then we go help out our good friend Vlad. Oh, he seems to be doing okay now, actually. Isabella getting involved. That's fine. Archeon's doing a run at. Like, I can deal with one of you, but I can't deal with both. Do you need to kill off the cow spawns? We'll do that. 
and I think we'll call it a day there. All right, well, my poor vampires absolutely wrecked. Still managed to get plenty of kills though. We did get Dead Rise again. I was kind of counting on that, honestly. <laughs> so they're both okay. We'll take replenishment so they get the health back. And we can carry on like nothing happened. Wonderful. One of the good things about uh, <laughs> playing the vampire guards. Alright, technology research. That's pretty good, actually. So I think what we'll do next is we could head towards Defiler of the Ancient Barrows to give us perfect vigor for skeleton warriors and skeleton spearmen. Or I could even head towards the Grave Guard up grades because we do have armies focused around grave guard uh, vampire crypts and vampire keeps are vampire crypts the gibbets aren't vampire crypts are they I think that's referring to minor and major settlements anyway let's go over to Isabella we're going to want to finish off Archeon, this is not fully ever but I also want Replenishment. He is not in a state to take the Writhing Fortress, is he? So I'm going to take the Burning Monolith. This way we get Replenishment at the end of the turn. We'll loot and occupy it. And the money. And the, uh, we'll save the Vargolf. I can, of course, add more to this army if we wanted to, but... I don't know if I want to. Like, a terror guy would actually be really good. The raised Deadpool here is incredible. <laughs> like, even a Mortis engine. Hmm. Oh, we can also get lead belchers from allied recruitment now. That's cool. Noblar Scrap Launcher. That looks awesome. Yeah, we're really getting some, some big stuff from the Ogres now. Might start adding them to some of my armies. Alright, from here we'll go take the Barrow. Uh, Skaven Bite can of course build that and that. I actually don't need the Mausoleum. So we'll just remove that. Oh, I can't colonize that because of the beastmen here. Yeah, we're going to have to go deal with them first. Okay, uh, let's head over to Warborged. So Warborged actually killed the army that was being annoying, which is great. Uh, we will have Volker head up to the Desolation of Drakenmoor. And that means that Warborg can head south. I think we kind of come over here, kind of head off Clan Moors. I think that's the good idea. Try and get rid of Queek. Yes, my lord. We're going to march around to Black Iron Mine. Our oh, Tretch is right there. Okay, maybe Tretch will attack us. That would be interesting. We might lose a few units if we do get attacked, especially if he gets like an ambush. Have to wait and see. Right, Lenart, can we settle another place for us? Thank you very much. More money, please. Just gotta make sure. These do have gibbets. That's the whole reason I'm recolonizing in the first place. Um, Ulrich can take Middenheim. <laughs> I love the way Laurelon Forest is owned by the Norskans. Okay, time for Morath Morfin to take Kappelberg. This has the potential 
to be quite a difficult battle. Just because of Festus mainly. We will play it out. I don't want to lose my poor ogres, even though they're terrible. And this is that army that could definitely benefit from the graveguard upgrades. And make these even stronger. Would be awesome. Alright, let's just create our line. A little group of ogres can chill out to the side for the time being. Off we go. Our blood dragon lord. I might try and get off a Breath attack. Maybe I could waste some shots here. Oh, what is that damage? Excuse me? Like some sort of ability that Festus put on us. Very rude. Because the Festering Stooges didn't actually do any attacks. That was a good hit. It is time. Very good. The more calls this way. The unfortunate thing about the ogres in this army is that they don't benefit from like any of the blood magic. Like I can't heal them. I have to be much more careful with when I use them. And kind of use them at the end of every battle. Necromancer. Beautiful decay. Right, here they go. <laughs> oh, the graveyard just pouring in. Oh, those abilities though. Alright, we gotta get on top of Festus. Take him out. There's a unit of marauders on their own. <laughs> Let's go slap them about with the ogres. Or raise some dead. It's quite cheap for me to do that. We'll just pop potion of strength. Keep going in on that. The living will join us. I'm gonna keep popping out undead as well. Get all the zombies there. There we go. It's nice fun for the ogre balls. Where's he gone? He cast another ability on my lord. I think he does, he just keeps doing it. Climb trail. I'm gonna give him dance kebab and we will I'm do some extra damage that way. Charge into the back of his plague bearers. I could drop a wind of death through here. 
Because it will hit the Chaos Warriors as well. Didn't really do as much damage as I would have liked there. This is impressive, like, Festus really not taking as much damage as I thought he would. I mean, now it seems like the dragon is finally getting the job done. Keeps using the same attack animation. Perfect. Alright, we're just going to wait for the units that can't route to disintegrate. And that'll be the settlement under our control. Just one chaos spawn there. Do you think there's any benefit to... healing anything like can't use it on the ogre balls yeah it's weird there's just no no target there I think they were just getting healed by the Morse engines very good though let's take Kappelberg Hopefully, we will see this army just suicide. Then that will be the end of Festus and of all these plagues. Oh, it'd be amazing. Let's go Magical Animus. We'll get the bonuses for the Grave Guard. So an extra 5 melee attack, 12 weapon strength, 12% weapon strength, and 15% spell resistance for all of these Grave Guard now. This night. And let's head over to Lisa Von Diesel. Okay. Uh, it does look like Castle Pastorm was taken there. So that's good. I'm just going to take that close victory. It did cost me a unit. But we will replace it. Have we given him bonuses for anything yet? Just the Mortis engines. And we lost a cryptical unit that was actually relatively high rank. I think I'm just going to pop some can race in there for now though. Oh, they did destroy the Broken Axe. Okay, good. So that's another faction do dealt with. Right, now we'll go take Castle Artois. And yeah, we're going to come through... Flinsberg and we'll head over here uh, towards Kalakaz Garaz and stuff. Although Kalakaz Garaz should be able to be taken by Gark this turn. I'm curious how replenishment works with this. Okay, they will get replenishment. That's fine. Do we get to level him up? I guess not. I don't even know if he did level up. So what's Lisa Von Diesel going to do? I mean, we could just recruit the new army that I was talking about. Oh, Kemba's back already. <laughs> That's funny. I 
I just need him to have like a, an army that's gonna die for us pretty much. I might throw in the Blood Knights just because it's a chunky unit, but mainly his front line just needs to be like skeletons and zombies and stuff. Yeah, this way what we can do is march round towards like Waterfall Palace. And actually start dealing damage to the Wood Elves. Alright, Roderick can take Krakadrak. Which we're going to have to play out, so let's jump on in. Okay. Uh, this is probably the best way to go in anyway, so we'll just stay here. Get the zombies lined up. Have the crypt calls behind. I'm gonna go dive onto the walls with all my flying units. All my melee units can go for the gate. Okay. Nice thing about a dragon in this situation is it does push some of them off the walls. And I think most of the time that does just straight up kill them. These Marauder champions just being flung all over the place. What's happening here? Why are they taking so much damage? Where is she? Oh, she got stuck inside. Okay. Still don't understand why he's taking so much damage, though. Maybe it's just because he's surrounded by the Marauder Champions. Interesting. Like, I thought he might be taking some sort of range damage. Maybe they have a tower up. Could be doing that. Maybe it was just the Marauder Champions surrounding him. Vampire. He isn't the highest level Vampire Come Lord at the moment, so... I don't expect his melee stats are that great. We'll keep him out of the way of the Marauder Hunters here. She really doesn't need to be inside the settlement. She doesn't even have Pitochets yet. These terror guys are going, doing a good job of chomping anyway. I don't care about armor. I think they actually have armor piercing. Yeah, they do. Quite a lot. Gonna breath attack the Marauders' great weapons here. Should be able to get a nice angle. There we go, lovely. And then we're gonna go dive into the Marauder Javelins, Marauder Hunters with Javelins. Get 
some zombies down to keep them engaged in melee. Just keep it sped up. Get some more magic down. Just help these units along their way. This terror guys did take a lot of damage as well, for example. I think it's just because they end up getting surrounded. We'll let that one get healed up. dive into a leader here. It's a skin wolf, so I actually might do some damage. Ah, never mind. Looks like we're all good. And that's victory. Okay, nice. And the battle there. That didn't take too long. Happy with that. Okay, I will mm, attempt to dilute and occupy. Actually, tell you what, we're gonna sack it, and then we'll take it again, because we were pretty close. So I knew that we'd be able to do both at the same time, and that way we get the extra money, which is actually pretty important for us. We'll put the gem mine shaft in there, demolish that, just fix that up. And that will give us all the money we need. Good. We'll go magical animus. And we'll get the upgrade for the Mortis Engines ward save. That is big. Big upgrade. 8% ward save. Basically just 8% less damage that they're going to be taking. What do you want? Uh, we definitely want Pillar Shades. I should have put the point in that. <laughs> That's fine. Alright, Milland. You're not in range to take Plinsburg, are you? Uh, I mean, we still head around this way. Regardless, I might be able to sack and, and occupy that one in as well. Okay, Kimla did level up. Let us make doom. I have the upgrade on Crypt Horrors, Far Guys, Far Goths. I guess, like. We can pop as many crypt horrors as we can in here for now. It is light. But unfortunately, guys, awaits. it has been my time. So I'm going to leave it here. In the next episode, what we're going to do is probably just move on to the next turn. See what happens. We shouldn't really be attacked by too many different factions. And we're starting to get to that point where we've killed most of the annoying factions. And the only one that's really doing a lot of damage to us right now is 
like the Skaven like clan moors here run through my lands. It's kind of annoying. That'll be my next priority, I think. That's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.